think I have. A, I love an, I love animals of all. Hey, can we start over? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all animals. I love all animals. They're great. I think uh, my favorite animal. Honestly, it might, it might be it, it might be dogs. I really like cats. I really like llamas. I like um, great. Uh, what what else do I like? Well, I'm um, personally a fan of the human animal. I think people should right. we should this refer to ourselves as animals animal. more because when we elevate ourselves, that's this guy's an animal. <laughs> yeah. I'm, an, I'm a fan of whatever He's animal. Of show me your animal whatever bro. animal the an, that animal the drummer is. Whatever animal yeah, that is, that's my favorite bro. animal. Yeah. This is my favorite animal. That's okay. animal, right? Yeah. That's his favorite animal. Yeah, that's my favorite animal right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can whistle pretty well. I can make like a water sound. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty cool. Very good. My foam roller. Oh yeah, my fanny pack full of hidden goodies. I bring that not just on tour. I bring that everywhere. Yeah, that's on stage. That's with me all the time. Yeah. Wallet, keys, hotel room key, yeah. etc. It's got everything in it. <laughs> uh, we tend to kind of get together and do like a little huddle and then just, a hug. You know, yeah, a hug and, and then sort of, you know, hype ourselves up a little bit, but nothing too weird. Nothing well, if, if I have a good show in a particular shirt, I'll wear that shirt a lot after that to show. There you go. That's a ritual. Yeah. Superstition, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, wanako. So a wanako is like a, it's a bit like a llama, um, but it spits. And so the song has this kind of mythological quality. Ya viene el guanaco means like, here comes the guanaco. Um, but in Chile, they also use the word guanaco to refer to police vehicles that shoot water at protesters. And so it's kind of this play of, um, it has that quality to it. And then it's also this, this political thing that um, isn't explicitly making like think a political point, but we're trying to capture that, that energy of, of what it's like to be um, at a protest and be sort of afraid of what is coming, but then also have that sense of like cathartic involvement in, in a crowd and what that energy is like, that mass energy. Um, so that's that's that uh, that song. That's kind of where um, the idea came from. Erasuris is actually a road in Chile, in, in Valparaíso. It goes all the way along the coast in, in that city. I believe it connects almost all the way to Viña del Mar, which is right next door. Um, and that song just had a lot of movement and it sort of felt like it never found its center or uh, right, never seemed to, have, yeah, it felt like it had this wandering, meandering quality. And, um, and then the subject matter of the song kind of goes into, into that a little bit, but it actually felt like a really appropriate title. So the second album was written in a very different way, I'd say, from the first album. The first album was um, written at a time when we could bring the songs out and sort of uh, feel them out in, 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 in the context of the shows and, and they, there was a lot of, they had, they had a live dimension to it and I think that works because the first album is a little bit more, it's more extroverted in the way that it feels and um, it's sort of drawing energy from stories um, and that took place in a, in a real and somewhat imagined place. Whereas this album is a lot more um, internal and introspective, it was written in quarantine and very much like, you know, learning my chops at uh, production and, and dead, then diving headlong into the, into the details of production. And, um, so it's a lot more kind of soundscapey and I think focused in some ways, and, um, but definitely a lot more psychedelic and introspective. Um, yeah, I think we experimented a lot on it. We added a whole bunch of different sounds and of course in the first one's full of all sorts of weird little sounds and kind of references other songs and stuff but this one definitely has um, a lot more of that um, yeah it took us a long time and it was very much born inside of a studio and the project has been just getting it out into the world and figuring out sort of how to adapt it to a live setting so it really depends on the night for me but um recently i think it's been wanako wanako has been a lot of fun to play um, in a live setting because it has so much energy and there's so many there's kind of a subtlety and I think the movements you kind of have to figure out ways to keep it dynamic 
um, and it's kind of operating in this somewhat limited range, but it just, the energy really rises and falls in a really interesting way. And we've been honing it in for a long time. That's one of the few ones that we've been playing for um, a few years now. So it's often a show closer. Too, yeah, and we stuff. often close a show with it because it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's really dancey and it's the one that gets, that we all get really into. Um, What's your favorite? Um, I mean, that's definitely one of them. Um, I mean, Cities is a lot of fun as well. Yeah. It's, you know, Driving beats and you know, super super dancey, almost kind of you know, kind of just uh, you know, garage rock, almost like some crowd rock style, keeping up rhythms that I can latch on to. I've been really liking the uh, Underbelly as well, and also Softy. And for me, the, those songs are interesting because you got Chris on piano, which doesn't always happen. That's an easy for us. And I'm also experimenting with the uh, cello bow. So that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's, that's a new thing. Heat <laughs> <laughs> 2? Heat 2? Yeah, it'll be from Heat 2. You know, it's because you know, it's, 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 right it's so melancholy. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, like, um, you know, like the leaving Las Vegas. It's probably a really bad answer, but um, it's uh, I don't know. Uh, it's yeah. a bleak. It's a very bleak answer, but yeah, I don't know. some like psychedelic fever dream thing, probably. Yeah. It's it was written in kind of a dark period and a somewhat I feel like I don't know. It's it's pretty abstract, so I wonder, you know, whoever did Enter the Void, but not quite that intense. Is oh maybe maybe that intense. We'll go there. Why not? I don't know. Enter the Void is pretty. Well, pretty how about answer, this? Pink Floyd once made an opera for an opera that didn't exist. So we just were making a movie. Are you talking about? Uh, yeah. And then that was set for Adam Hart That was it. Okay. And so ours is an album for a movie that doesn't exist. You could, probably, you, yeah. you could probably throw it on Wizard of Oz and play it on. Moses Sumney was, was, was something I was listening to a lot. Um, Maybe, you know, I don't know how many people have heard of, uh, I mean, we'll listen to a lot of ambient music, but like Tim Hecker's always been a really big influence just in terms of how he handles ambience. Um, uh, yeah, what else? I mean, oh, um, uh, oh gosh, I forgot her name, the Argentinian. Juana Molina. Juana Molina. Yeah, Juana Molina, for sure. Um, yeah, she was definitely, I think on Wanako, there was some stuff that she had done that was definitely a direct influence there early on in the process. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm obsessed with uh, Brazilian music, especially yeah. the uh, Tropicalia, Georgie Ben, Sue George, yeah. those guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I would say that and um, Deer Hunter and stuff. Deer Hunter, is, Deer Hunter has been an influence probably for a while. I think some of the more kind of droney, intense stuff, yeah, Swans as well, a little bit actually. 